I was probably eating once a day, but I was eating anything that I want, as much as I want, powdered on the plate, late at night, it didn't matter. And I, and I blew up. Well, howdy, everybody, and welcome to Bold Carnivore. Here I am hanging with the Browns. This is fantastic. These are great people, and I enjoy their videos very much. High quality. All right, so let's just jump right in. Miss G. Brown? Yes. Tell us about your story, if you will. Okay, well, our show is hanging with the Browns, and my uh, half of the Brown is not here. I explained to you how uh, he's at work. He won't be uh, back for a couple of weeks. Well, actually in a week, but then next week we'll be on a cruise. Uh, what nice. is the story? My story is just like most, I can only speak for the females. Most females, we gain the weight. We have babies. Uh, we don't lose the baby fat. Um because a lot of times when we are pregnant, we eat what we want and not, we just don't have a clear understanding <laughs> of what's going on. And so with that, we play the yo-yo up and down diet. Uh, we don't want to hear about diet and exercise. And we look for a shot, a pill, um, we see someone that has lost some weight. We ask, how did you do that? They'll say, oh, a B12 shot or something. I know people who spend $100 a week on shots. Um, just even for everything that you spend over in the gym. So I never did the B12 shots. But trust me, I've tried. Oh, what, what there's this one pill that when you would take it, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, you had oily stool. I, I don't mm. know. Yeah, um, because it's supposedly to help your body not absorb the fat. How crazy is that? And you would have these oily stools and honey, don't get out there and poop. Because you don't know if you had an accident or not. Well, with that going up and down, up and down. Um, you lost 30, you gain 60. Uh, you have an event, you lose a few pounds. And then as soon as you start eating uh, again, how you would normally eat. Um, I did the 10 day smoothies. Uh, I did the cabbage diet. I did the egg diet. Uh, and then I went vegan. I went mm. vegan uh, about five years ago. And in the very beginning, I did feel good, but I believe that's from what I cut out. Um, you're in different groups, and then you find out that Oreos are vegan. Um, you find out um, just a lot of different things are vegan. And before you know it, because you have not mastered containing yourself, you end up uh, a fat vegan. And then, and then I actually, um, I guess my feelings was hurt because people would, you know, put up little memes and say, how come most vegans I know are fat? Um, or how come most vegans are forever trying to make a food taste like a meat, you know, and we do because that's your taste buds. That's what you were used to. In a nutshell, my brother came to visit. We were attending, uh, <laughs> excuse me, our niece's uh, high school graduation. Uh, Mr. Brown has suffered. Let me just back up real quick. So sure. him, and I, I might not name them all, uh, glaucoma, Ouch. Um, uh, gout. Some form of room, uh, arthritis, high blood pressure, and he had his gallbladder removed. So mm -hmm. that's a few things in regards to him. Uh, on our channel, I've shared, He, I, I took some video of him. He didn't know that I was video videotaping him as he was trying to make it to the bathroom. He was actually using my mother's walker because mm -hmm. he really couldn't walk. 
and it got really bad. And for me, with the up and down, uh, I ended up with the gastric sleeve. And after that, I developed high blood pressure. I was the one, even though I was extremely overweight, that I did not have blood pressure issues. I was not diabetic. I wasn't even pre-diabetic. I was none of those things. But uh, I believe that when I gave birth to my children, the epidural where they punctured me um, made my spine weak in that area. And so I had these herniated discs that went out. Um, and I suffered with uh, severe sciatic uh, bursitis in the left hip with restless leg. So that was that's all of us that, that that's he and I together. And I'm one I don't mind sharing my age. He and I both are on our road to 60. So I'm turning 60. Oh, well, you look uh -huh. fabulous, ma'am. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like I said, my brother came to visit because his daughter uh, plays sports and he was in the stands with the one of the parents and the parent started talking about the carnivore diet and my brother looked at him and in his head he said he yeah, this this dude look about 30 pounds lighter and so my brother started doing research and then he started the diet probably two and a half to three weeks before he visited us and uh the moment it was actually we were my husband and I were doing intermittent fasting so when it was time for my husband to eat. And with the gout, we pretty the only thing that we found that did not give him a flare up was chicken seizure salad. This oh, yeah. man was probably on his fourth week of chicken Caesar salad. That was the only thing that he ate was chicken Caesar salad. And so when my brother was talking to him, that day it was a Friday. That day, he said, "That's it." He and and he started the carnivore diet. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, "Okay, well, I eat vegetables. I I I, <laughs> I'm not about to eat meat. I'm just not." Mm -hmm. Well, by Sunday, I started with uh, lamb and bacon. Those were the two meats that I ate in the beginning. And so whatever his day is, I'm two days uh, back because I, I started that Sunday. And it's, we are, we just did a show because the, my husband is on zero meds. Every ache, pain, every, everything from the both of us is gone. The only thing that I still suffered with was restless leg. And mm. I found the cure. I'll tell the audience mm. at the end what it was. Go ahead. Well, that would be fabulous to know, I'm sure. My mother's got some restless leg syndrome now and again, and so she might be happy to hear about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that as she's gone more carnivore, that's also been reduced quite somewhat. Well, how about that? I see. Um, a few questions about that, though. Um, you say you were a vegan. Mm -hmm. Why were you a vegan? What was your reasoning? Uh, I, we have, <coughs> excuse me, some friends and their birthday is the wife and my husband had the exact same birthday and her husband's birthday is two days later. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's the three of them. And we flew to Hawaii because that's where they are right now. And uh, we got there. We woke up in the morning and she proceeded to explain that she didn't have any breakfast food uh, because they were vegan. And I'm like thinking in my head, well, it's a fine time for you to tell me, <laughs> excuse me, it's a fine time for you to tell me that. And then uh, I asked the question, well, why? And she said that they watched the documentary, What the Health? Mm. And I said, okay, let me see it. I've always been able to manipulate food. That one I can. You just, you know, I've been on so many different diets. So if you turn around and say, hmm, 
let's not eat this. Let's do this. I can swing it. I can do it. It's food because a lot of times, eventually, you're going to go back to how you were eating anyway. So uh, I've learned to tell myself it's not it's not no, it's not right now. Okay. And I watched the uh, video and went vegan that day. And my husband so, was like, we are on vacation. It's all of our birthdays. And you went vegan. And I say, yep, and you are too. And so he said that was the worst birthday ever. <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> birthday ever. Yeah. Now, I got a few questions out of that there. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you believe that the vegan lifestyle actually contributed to your uh, health the evolution? <laughs> Okay, so it did not remove any of the inflammation or anything in the body because uh, uh, some of your plants are toxin and um, we're forever out eating on something <laughs> that they find in the forest. Um, and I believe that me forcing my husband into that lifestyle ultimately destroyed his gallbladder mm. because see you were eating all the meat and the fats and the bile was there remove the fat and the meat the bile had nothing to secrete so i believe it his his it, it turned into sludge in the system mm. because there was no exit and and i believe now and i always tell him i almost killed you because <laughs> that was very painful for him and mm -hmm. so I know that that's not the way we are supposed to eat. It's not. Well, I can appreciate that answer. I have not personally tried veganism, but um, I've known a few and you know, they've always appeared less than healthy. So well, <laughs> I you know, um, like I said, a, a lot are overweight. And in the beginning, you do feel better. That's because of the stuff that you cut out. Not mm -hmm. the meat, but some of the junk. But then I realized potato chips, that's a potato. I could still eat that. Oh, I'll tear some lays up. Mm. Yeah. So, but so that wasn't good for you. What kinds of things did you eat before you went vegan? Anything that I want. I tell people all the time that um, I grew up in a household where uh, my mother's French and my dad is black. Mm -hmm. And so with that mixture, my mother exposed us to everything. Uh, and then the only thing that I did not eat, uh, I've, I, I've never eaten uh, pig feet, mm -hmm. uh, but I have had the, everything else of it, the tail and, and the nose. I've had all of that. Uh, I grew up in the Midwest and our barbecue places uh, actually s sell the nose as barbecue. Um, and the other thing that uh, I just refuse to eat is boiled okra. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Outside wow. of I mean, that. I can appreciate uh, that. Outside of that, I've had beef brains. I, I grew up on a, a wonderful palate because of my mother. Hmm. Well, I second the motion on the uh, boiled okra. I don't believe that should ever be boiled. No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. And my father loved it. And I it, it used to make me gag when he would spoon it. I'm like, oh, I, I couldn't even look at it. And then let that, mm -mm, mm, I, I just never understood that one, ever. Uh -uh. Change the subject, let's go. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I know that, that mental image is playing over mm -hmm. and over again. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so after you went vegan and you found that you could eat just about anything as long as it was, quote, vegan, what was your favorite vegan food? Um, yeah, I would, I, nothing really. Um, I just ate whatever it is that I wanted to eat. Uh, I was real thankful when, um, beyond, no, I, I wasn't a big beyond burger person. They put a flavor in it that I was not fond of. Um, but honey, when impossible came out. It was on because I would do tacos. I would do 
uh, meatballs. I would do meatloaf. Um, I even learned how to make a uh, vegan rib utilizing that and jackfruit. As a matter of fact, I think I even have uh, that video up on like Instagram from years ago. I still see people uh, saving that video. I'm like, I should take that thing down. But uh, yeah, so. You know, honestly, I'd leave that up though, because it may inspire someone to follow you and then find that you went carnivore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> wow. All right. So you worked in the school system, you said before. Mm -hmm. And how long did you work in the school system? Uh, about seven years. About seven years. Now, you went in the school system as a full teacher or? No, that was a sub. So I can have the flexibility uh, with my daughter. And why did you need that flexibility? Because she was sick. I had to go back and forth to the doctor and I did not want to have to take a day off. I just did not accept an assignment and I had my own free time. So I worked at will. That started because my oldest daughter, who's no longer here with us, she took her last breath in my arms at the age of 30. And I believe that if I knew this lifestyle, uh, she's been gone for 11 years now. So if I knew this lifestyle, that there is a possibility, I won't just hold on to that, but there's a possibility that she would still be here. So um, just so I could continue to have income, but then if she had an appointment, I can go. But I'm I'm so great. This the the, uh, the school hired me on, and I lo she lost her battle, and then that gave me something to do, um, daily, to help me move forward versus to sit at home because I uh, at that time, uh, taking care of her. I was probably eating once a day, but I was eating anything that I want, as much as I want, pounded on the plate, late at night, it didn't matter. And I, and I blew up. I, I, I got huge. Um, uh, I was eating my feelings and just everything. So um, I started a, a jewelry business and then I started making more money with it than I was in the school system. So I went on and retired from there. I've been an entrepreneur ever since. Nice. So if I may, what actually occurred with your daughter? How did she end up dying? Uh, the doctors said it was a mixed connective tissue disorder. I never agreed with it. I didn't fight it. I mean, not here is not here. So. It is what it is. She left behind two children. She disorder. Mm -hmm. She left behind two children. Pretty much um, her body started rejecting her lungs. That's in mm. a nutshell. Until mm -hmm. she could not breathe anymore. And uh, I, she literally took her last breath in my arms. I was holding her. So that sounds autoimmune to me. It is. That's why I said, I know this diet could have helped. Mm, I agree. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I really do get frustrated uh, with a lot of the things that are from lupus to uh, uh, Crohn's, irritable bile, all of that. It, com it comes mm. from the diet. It Scolitis. comes from the diet. This is just that simple. And it, it, it's funny because I'll have conversations with people and then uh, tell them now what I'm doing. Oh, I don't know if I could eat all the eat meat all the time. OK, <laughs> but get what I just said. I'm saying that health wise. But you would prefer to take a pill and so you can continue to eat crap. It's, you know, it's just that simple, but it is what it is. So, mm. so I have a question for see. you. 
Go ahead. What made you choose us? And normally there's, but he's he's at work. So uh, you oh, only, I see, you I only see. get half of the brown today. That's all right. So what That's was? all right, ma'am. Oh, good question. Actually, it was your dynamics. I watched one of your videos and you guys were so dynamic together. It was it was great. It was like uh, you guys switched off from being the host and the interviewee yourselves. And it was really a great dynamic. And I thought that you guys would work really well on on our show over here. And I, I, we hear a lot in regards to our dynamic when we're talking. And uh, be, it, it's almost as if um, he and I are conducting a conversation and the viewers, the audience uh, are just being a part of it. And, you know, we just share things. We decided, even though we're um, carnivores, when we decided to do the channel, and that was a big deal uh, for that because we didn't have a YouTube channel, but that's how much we believed. I, I went vegan. I didn't start a channel to tell people about it. I tell people all the time, I didn't beat your door down to my... I might share with you like Meatless Monday, just try it and see if you like it. But I didn't beat your door down about it because I did not feel 100%. This diet, and I, he's an introvert. We started an entire channel and uh, I talk about everything. Uh, I talk about our health. I talk about our grands. I talk about uh, our sex life. I talk, I cover it all. I really do because everything has changed. Everything has changed. And so it was to the point where we actually started a channel. Hmm. This diet, well, I don't even like to call it a diet. Our new lifestyle is phenomenal. It really is. And it's, it's worth documenting it. And that's what I look at YouTube as being. I'm documenting it and um, I, I plan on living to at least 100. So let's say 60 years from now, I believe that it'll be much more popular and our great, great grandchildren can watch us. And still learn from us. So not only is this a channel for us, this is a legacy leaving where I'm showing them how I cook, uh, showing them the interaction between my husband and I. We take that. So we didn't name the channel uh, like the carnivore life. We didn't do that. It's hanging with the brands. So then that way you are hanging with us as we explore and take this trip. Uh, we were in Alaska uh, looking for food. So we were um, on a cruise ship. We took the people with us on the cruise ship. You got a chance to see um, places that we went. We took you on that journey with us. So you're pretty much hanging with us. We love it. I do too. It's inspiring. Fantastic. Yeah, take your camera everywhere because that's part of that's part of your life. It's not just that plate. I want people because when you start telling people carnivore, it's like, well, well, what what you do? I live. That's what I do. I live. So if I if I'm someplace and all there is is a hot dog, all I want is a hot dog. Keep your bun. All right. And you just sit. So I'm showing you that it is. Oh, Okay, and this is how we're doing it. So, yeah, we're getting ready to, as a matter of fact, we have three cruises before the year is out. We'll be on the ship uh, next week. We'll be on the ship uh, once I lost my mom. Um, and even prior to, I started doing Thanksgiving on the cruise ship. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the family is there. Sometimes they're not. It doesn't matter to me. He and I are on there. So we'll be on there for Thanksgiving. And then uh, we'll be on the ship for his 60th birthday. And uh, that'll ride this year out. And we take the people with us. 
Yeah. And uh, like we were on the ship, I had a uh, espresso martini and I did it. And I share with the public, this is what happened to me uh, when I, it actually didn't bother me. It tastes really good too. Uh, but I can say that if I eat something that my body does not agree with, the first thing that happens to me is the bursa in my left hip. And then I, I can like not walk for like two uh, two days. Well, I can walk, but I walk with a little limp for two days. And so 15 minutes on my lips is not worth two days of pain. That means I can't lay on that side. I can't do any of that. And I know that that'll be a food I'll never put back in my body. And you've experienced that on other occasions then? Uh, barbecue sauce has been the thing that uh, did that to me uh, because mm -hmm. uh, I cook out a lot. And um, man, I, I, I miss barbecue sauce. And so um, I forced it and I won't do that again. So many barbecue sauces have additives such as black pepper and cinnamon honey and brown sugar, right? It was, I'm so. pretty sure it was the sugars because I've had black pepper uh, on, um, what was it? I fixed something and I put a little pepper on it and it did not bother me. Uh, but it's nothing that I do often. It's not like pepper is my season. I, I can't even remember what it was that I was cooking. And um, I put a little pepper on it. Outside of that, um, I'll do every now and then I'll put a little garlic powder on something. But for my husband, he's strict. My husband is a lion. Um, we found where pork did not agree with him. It probably was in the amount that he was having. But um, so he's pretty much beef, salt, and water twice a month and sometimes only once. Um, he'll have two strips of bacon. Like, I, so I'll, the, I'll do that. With the pork, I would be concerned with what they eat because sometimes the linoleic acid can get pretty high in a pig. Yeah, so if you get some clean pork like wild boar, that may not occur. Yeah, but it, it's the bacon that he likes the flavor of. And so with that, we just, he just doesn't. For me, uh, I haven't found a meat that bothers me. And uh, so I'll dip around, but it's mainly beef and lamb, what I do. Mm. Mm -hmm. But then if cook I your lamb. Some, uh, sausage and eggs, I'll fix it. <laughs> How do you cook your lamb up? In a cast iron skillet with some butter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, right. that is it. And I'll do and I'll eat the whole pack. Yeah, I, I, I picked that up like. Um, yeah, I just put it all there and, and I just sit there and gnaw. And I love it because I'm at home and I get to like get all around the bone and I don't have to use a knife. <laughs> and do you do any snacking on your carnivore lifestyle? Uh, <laughs> for me. I tried the uh, eating once a day, but I had the gastric sleeve. So I have a very small stomach and I wasn't taking in enough food. Keep in mind. So, of course, there's no, excuse me, sugars or anything like that. So, like, I can eat, let me give you, like, a chicken leg. That's what my stomach can hold. Well, I can't survive. Well, I could, but I found myself being weak. And so I break mine off during a window. Okay, so uh, I still intermittent fast during my window, but I eat multiple times during that time. If I snack on something, it'll be like corned beef. Mm. I'll have them to slice it up. I'll roll it up and and that'll be a, a snack. But outside of that, I really, I'll fix a steak 
And a lot of times I can only take in half of it. So what I do, I eat the fat portions first. And then in about an hour or so, I'll go and finish the rest. And then uh, later on, I might have a burger. And it all depends. So it'll it'll be a regular size burger. And um, I'll see close to four o'clock uh, how I'm feeling. And do I want to take in something else? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Now, for my husband, he eats once because he can sit there and take it all in and just he's done. But that doesn't work for me. And that is the only thing in my life that I regret is having that surgery. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I did, I did a couple of videos on that, just really pleading because uh, they don't explain to you your side effects. All mm -hmm. we see is just being smaller. I tell people all the time, I develop high blood pressure after the surgery. Now, how the heck that happened? I don't have the faintest idea. It's gone now, but yeah, that's what I had. Is that a non-reversible surgery? Yes. Yeah, the stomach is in the trash. Did they tell you that that was non-reversible on the yeah. forefront or no? Yeah, they let, they, oh, they tell you all of that. They cover their tail. But once again, when you have dealt with weight all that time, all you see is being smaller. And then, of course, they let you know um, it can reverse your diabetes, your cholesterol. It'll tell you, but I didn't have any of that in the beginning anyway. So all I wanted was to be smaller. Hmm. Seems like it's a little off label to do a surgery like that just to lose weight, but I suppose that's what they're marketing it as. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cause you have to, um, in, 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 uh, before you can have the surgery, you have to have documentation that you were obese. I want to say for like three consecutive years or something like that. So my doctors, uh, I had to go in. And see to to make sure that all like when you go and have your checkup or for whatever reason that you were that it was documented there. They just don't take your word for it. That it was documented there that you were overweight. <clears throat> yeah, and mm. I think that when you get to that point, you're just sick and tired of of sick and tired. You know, now they have where oh the big girls. Mm. Mm -mm. You know, there's no, uh, now I did think I was cute. So there's, there's none of that. I I was fine. Self-esteem was great. I just got tired of my thighs rubbing together. I got tired of, um, the fat rolls. I really did. Yeah. But if I would have known about this, man. So you said that you started the diet just about three days after your husband, right? Two days. Mm -hmm. Two days. Two, okay, two days. And um, what is it that motivated you so quickly to change your mind? Uh, like I said, for me, my bursa, the bursitis, the um, how I used to get out of bed. So, <clears throat> and I... I, I used to tell my husband, I'm tired, but I hate going to bed because um, the agony that I was in in the morning. So my body was so full of pain that I, to get out of bed, I couldn't just sit up, turn to the side and get out of bed. I couldn't do that. So I would have to roll on my stomach and then push myself backwards out of the bed. And then I, all, I was always hunched over. And then by the time I made it, I don't know, about 10 steps, I could stand up and then move forward. 
And that was, and then of course, if you sit down in a chair for a period of time, uh, you, your body got stiff. And I used to call it the, the old people because when I stood up, my, my, because you're, when you're seated, you're in this L position. So I couldn't just stand straight up. I stayed in the L position as my legs were moving. And then I would slowly straighten my body out. I was too young for that. I did not like that at all. Well, I agree with you. He was definitely too young for that. <laughs> wow. So did your husband have any resolution to his problems within that short space of time that made you go, hmm, this might be the right way? No, it was only a couple of days. The only thing that I can say in regards to him was I saw the happiness on his face, mm -hmm. which meant that he um, he was eating. He was eating food. I told you he was eating a uh, chicken Caesar salad all that time. And now here he is eating. So uh, I have pictures of him with a huge smile on his face. There was such a satisfaction with that. Well, he and I are copycats, meaning if he's going to do it, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it, he's going to do it. If, if he's going over there, I'm going over there. People always say, y'all don't get tired of each other. No, I really love him. And plus, I'm fun to be around. What are you talking about? So it just <laughs> works for us. It really, really does. We don't, we don't look to find things to get away from each other. I, it, it's almost as if we get saddened by like, hey, I'm going to go over here and, you know, he's not going or he's going to go to the store. And I'm like, oh, I'll see you when you get back. I, I, we really love each other we, and, each, and, each, and enjoy each other's company. So this is not um, fake or anything. So it's like, no, if he's going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I just, I couldn't do beef right away though. I don't know. Um, I even sometimes now, if it's cooked in the house, you have to have, because our exhaust fan exhausts outside. You have to have that exhaust fan on. I can't, uh, like, it'll smell good while you're cooking it, but the, the uh, yeah, I, I don't like the after smell. Mm -hmm. It's too much. <clears throat> and your preferred cooking medium is butter. Uh, well, it all depends on what it is. Um, steaks a lot of time, I just let the steak cook and it's on the salt and it's on juices. Lamb, I like with butter. Um, liver, I like with butter. Uh, mm. I even have tallow to fry chicken. Now that cost me $25 for that can, but it is what it is. So um, I'll season my chicken and then I take pork, uh, plain pork rinds and ground them up. And then that's my flour. Mm -hmm. And it makes some of the best chicken uh, ever. Now, I don't have that often. Uh, I probably have fried chicken maybe twice. Uh, I'll do wings in the air fryer. And uh, what else? With ground beef, I did. I heard someone, and I I did do it. I cut up uh, a cube of cheese, put it inside of the hamburger meat, and then I wrapped the hamburger meat in bacon in the muffin pans, and I baked those. Um, that's something simple that you can literally pick up and eat like an apple. Oh, so that sounds good. Yeah. It's, it's just so many different things that, that you can do, but yeah. So when I fry liver, I do, um, I do that in butter as well, but I have uh, a can of bacon grease down there. Uh, if needed, uh, he likes, well, he did. Uh, every now and then he'll have uh, an egg 
but it'll be cooked in bacon grease. So you said your, your husband had his gallbladder out. So how does that impact him eating a bunch of fat and meat? Um, with the diet, uh, well, with the new lifestyle, you'll see changes um, within the uh, first 30 days. Some people as soon as two weeks. But for me, it is the first 30 days, then three months, six months, a year. Those are like the markers. And then after that, it's, you know, annual. Uh, it's almost like birthdays. You celebrate 13 because you're a teenager, 16, sweet 16, 18, 21, 25, and then you go 30, 40, 50. So those are like markers. And so uh, in the very beginning, we did, we did, we did a poop episode for him. And we did a poop episode for me because both of ours was different. And um, on his, that's one of the things that he talked about is not having a gallbladder and it'll, it would run through him. Now it's, he has to take in like a stupid amount of uh, fat for it to affect him. Other than that, he's, he, he poops every, uh, I don't know three to five, three to four days. That's pretty much, so his, your body is wonderfully made. And so a lot of times you'll hear people say, if uh, a, something happens to a person's eyesight, their hearing is better. So your body is going to compensate. And without having that gallbladder, his other organs have jumped in and they're doing what they're supposed to do now. And they've compensated for the lack of the gallbladder. And yeah, he has no issues anymore. That gallbladder used to run our, run and ruin our lives. If we went out to eat, we couldn't get up and leave the restaurant right away. We had to see if something triggered him. And then he would say, uh, no, I'm good. Let's go. But we were headed home. It's not like you were leaving a restaurant and then headed somewhere. We couldn't do that. Um, and then if he, uh, it was a day of travel, he wouldn't eat at all because he didn't know if it was going to impact him on the road, in the airlines, you, you know, and there have been times because, you know, once you sit down and it's takeoff time, you have to stay in your seat. That's it, it's it, there are times where and he has to start the sentence. I don't have a gallbladder. I I have to go to the bathroom, you know, so and that's unsafe. You're you, you're not in a seat. It's not like the pilot is going to stop this plane because you got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. But I want people to know who don't have a, uh, a gallbladder. There is a light at the end of this tunnel, your body will literally go back to normal. That's amazing. That is amazing. Because I, I know that a lot of people are coming into the carnivore diet and their bodies have been beat to pieces from the way that they ate before. And many of them are missing an organ like gallbladder or something else. And really, it does give a lot of hope to look forward to, well, you mean I can be normal again? At least yes. to the extent that I can be. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. That's that is awesome. And I'm glad to hear it. All right. I'm yeah. going to give you what I do for my restless leg. Oh, yeah. I do that. Found where um, what ended up. People were telling me magnesium. They give me all of these things on my channel. And um, my restless leg. When it was. When I was not a car carnivore, uh, it would affect me on a plane. It, anytime that I sat uh, an hour or more. So literally, if I'm on a plane, I am stomping my foot, right? And my daughter, we, were, uh, we flew to Paris. And she said that I ran to Paris because my circulation, I was literally sitting there. Like, like I'm on a bicycle 
And I could not stop my legs because if I did, they just wanted to move. So I just sat there and tap, 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 tap. I did that probably for about 15, 20 minutes. And then they finally calmed down. Now, if it bothers me, uh, I don't know. It, it must have been God that told me. I went and put on a pair of compression socks. And that was it. I had no issue at all. So being on the carnivore diet, um, the restless leg calmed down that it would bob versus every night. It might hit me every three to four nights. So if I had an episode, nine out of 10, I won't have it tomorrow. So in the last, I will say eight days, I've had to wear the compression socks twice. Well, that's nice. Oh, that is wonderful. Especially when I put the compression socks on and have no issue. I just have on these tall black socks with my pajamas. So <laughs> it looks like I'm getting ready to go somewhere. So yes, it was just as simple as the compression socks. And that was enough pressure that it just didn't bother me anymore. So I hope that helps someone have her, especially if she start your mom, she started in this carnivore diet. And, and maybe when she is in a chair or anything and it's bothering her, get her a pair of compression socks. Uh, the one I, I used to have to wear them in traveling to stop the swelling in my feet. Cause if I stayed seated too long and travel, uh, I always had to wear slip on shoes um, because my, my feet would swell. And so then I learned to put compression socks on while traveling. And uh, but it was the compression socks that helped with the the minor restless leg that I have now. Yep, that's a great feeling. So how long have you guys been doing the carnivore lifestyle exactly? Um, Thursday will be 90 days. Nice. See all those resolutions over such a short period is fantastic. I, I try and tell people I now feel 33 on the inside. Mm. I literally have no pain, no ailments. Um, uh, the my gum tissue, I, uh, my hair is starting to grow. I, it, it's it's uh, oh oh um, there was something that uh, they were trying to diagnose me with, but I wouldn't take any medicine. Fibromyalgia. Ooh. I forgot about that. Uh, you you could not press on my body. Uh, if you hug me too tight, I was like, oh no, yeah, you yeah, you just could not. Um, ladies like pedicures. So when I would go and, and how they massage the, I didn't want in, you couldn't do that to me. I only wanted you to do my toes and, and my heel. That's it. I stopped wearing, uh, polish on my nails probably 15 years ago. I couldn't even put clear on. And, um, now I just had my first full body massage with no issues at all. Even when I was going to physical therapy, all you heard me was uh, pretty much in the room trying not to scream mm. because they were trying to, you know, uh, help with my back. Scream, scream, scream. Uh, I was on Percocets for three years. Um, I mean, the list goes on. My pain, they were talking about back surgery, fusing my back together. Uh, all of that, gone. I have zero issues in this short amount of time. So I can't even imagine what 60 days, uh, I mean, uh, six months is going to feel like. One year anniversary. I can't even imagine it. And weight wise, in April, the 28th, I weighed 192 pounds. 
And I always tell ladies that, that what you end up saying is, Ooh, at least I'm not 200. Uh, now I weigh 145. Nice. Mm -hmm. it, it started with the intermittent fasting because mm -hmm. I started that then. But the major portion of the weight um, has been with the carnivore of how this has been, if, if such a thing, this is good weight loss. This is mm -hmm. um, my body. It wasn't a calorie. I don't count calories. This was not a calorie deficit. This was a my body took care of itself and got rid of that excess fat. Yeah. 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 It, this is a whole different thing feeling in weight loss now, the, all of it, it 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 feels different and uh on social media two things that i do hashtag road to 60 r-o-a-d 260 um and then the other one hashtag never be big again i will never be big again and normally when we diet we know if we start eating back like we were, there's a great chance that that weight is coming back. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know I will never be big again. The downside, I don't have many clothes because there was, uh, I had some clothes and I tried them on and I, I said, oh, I'll be able to wear this. And then probably three weeks later, they were hanging off of me. And so I've probably given away 12 trash bags full of clothes. And some of them still have received uh, price tags on them. Yeah. I, well, that's I a probably, good thing there. Yeah. Uh, well... <laughs> The, no, what's good is because I am turning 60 and my husband said, well, doggone it, we're going on a shopping spree. And but I told uh -huh. him, I said, even at 145, I still have some excess. So um, I would I still want to drop probably an additional 15. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go ahead and shop. If I shop now, it'll be something uh loose fitting that you know if I lose a few pounds so normally I wear yoga pants a jacket something like that yeah I don't know how it's going to work on this cruise that we're getting ready to go on I, I have a few sundresses that uh I had to maneuver to make them work because I don't want to spend any money right now hmm. Well, I can understand that. What are your long-term goals? In? In the carnivore community, in your lifestyle, in your general living. I think our long-term goal is to continue getting this message out and um, I'm look that I just shared. I'm looking forward to the six month mark, and because you and I, we have this platform where we can uh, document our progress and process that um, that'll be around for others to see, and I really hope that. People will see this and not only just follow, but I, I, I say it all the time on our channel, just 30 days. Those 30 days are going by whether you want them to or not. And I tell people, tell yourself, quit telling yourself, I can't have this. Just say, not now. Just tell yourself that. Because, see, there's going to be an element of clarity at the end of the 30 days. And you, your body will let you know what you put back in it 
if it's harmful or not. And um, then you just make the best decision for yourself. And just getting this word out, just getting this word out. Because you can do it. I tell people, quit overthinking it. Go to your refrigerator, go to your freezer and look at everything that's meat. Start there. It took me, uh, I just cleared out my house. Uh, I, I videotaped that as well. Showed you what my pantry looked like ahead of time. Uh, I threw away so much open stuff. Uh, I told people, go look at your seasonings. Half of them are expired anyway. I don't know why we think nutmeg lasts forever. Cinnamon lasts forever. You put it in there. You bought that thing three Thanksgivings ago. And you're still trying to use it again. So, yeah, just start one day at a time. One day at a time. Quit thinking about that cake. Quit thinking about, you know, chips. And, and and oh, you mean tell me, I oh, macaroni and cheese. Oh, my God. Oh, I love me rice and great. Quit thinking about that. If you really, really want to make a change, I don't understand people that are willing to, uh, prescriptions normally come in 30-day supply. You're willing to take those pills with the side effects 30 days but not give this a try for 30 days. Just stop that foolishness. Just stop it, I say. Take your health. This is that one body that you have. Take care of it. Most people go to church and they tell you about that's your temple. Take care of it. And so that's what I love about this platform. It really is. And so not only am I just talking about it, I'm taking you along with us. All right. We we do little video. Uh, I need to make shorts up with them, but I don't. And trust me, I've tried so much. That coffee that they have out, the mushroom coffee, bought that. The little gut pills, bought that. I'm telling you, because especially when you start getting older, you want to live. You want to live. But for some reason, people don't want to give up that processed food to live quality. Me just being here and you shoving me around or I need you to bring me something. I want, I want quality of life. So for my 60th birthday, I, I'm turning a cartwheel. <laughs> something that I have not yeah. done. I'm telling you. And my husband said, I'll record it. I said, uh-uh, you're going to be spotting me. You better put that uh, thing up on a tripod. I... <laughs> yeah. I, those are the things that you think about. Why do you have to look at someone else and say, oh, they really look good for their age? You can too. You can too. Get your body how it needs to be. You've eaten junk long enough. Make the change. Give yourself 30 days. Give yourself 30 yes, days. Ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. I like that so much. All right. So I think that's a great place to close it up for the time. And I'd like to thank you, Miss G, for coming on. I You've thank you for guest. your email. I really do. I want you nothing but success. I love the fact that you're able to document this. Since you said your mom uh, is, w whether she's full carnivore, but she's taking it on. You need to sit with her and have a talk. And, and I say that because I don't have my mother anymore. You're going to love watching her in action. Yes, ma'am. You will. All right. Well, bye to your audience. Bye to your audience. All right. Bye.